As Perry Logan stood on the precipice, he thought to himself, Verily, this dizzying cliff, this great precipice, which doth make the mind real, is not as scary to me as living in a world of drones, living in a world with guns up the wazoo, a world where we wait fearfully for the next child massacre, or a world where global warming has scorched the earth to such an extent that civilized life is impossible, that we will have to move into a dome, taking care to first kill and eat the global warming deniers. Verily, Perry thought, it is not this cliff but these many things that frighten me. Thank goodness we can tweet about it, but often I get the feeling that this may be my last. Tweet! That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's May 7th, 2013, and if the drums don't get you, the guns will, and if the guns don't get you, the global warming will. The world is all a Twitter, but so many things are tweeting their last. Our constitutional rights are going up in smoke. The economy has totally curled. Government would appear to have pooped out completely and become utterly dysfunctional, as revealed by the polls. They are building tiny little drones and issuing drones to everyone. It won't be too long before your local municipality will be bugging you with drones, before private citizens will have their own little drones flying around, before the terrorists will be sending out drones up your wazoo. Falling down an endless precipice is nothing compared to the terror of a world full of drones. And there in the forefront, our beloved president, Barack Obama, totally smudging the reputation of the Democratic Party. Totally smudging the reputation of the Democratic Party? No! But out, Perry. Trying to do a dissent here. Verily, Perry thought, I'm not so worried about landing on my head as I am. Some group of gun guys is going to think a perfectly legitimate government is a tyranny and open fire on their fellow citizens. It's that weird. They don't seem to realize what the civilized world knows. There's no room for guns in a civilized society. There's no room for guns in a civilized society. If the drones don't get you, the global warming will. If the global warming doesn't get you, the bloody guns will. Don't the gun guys realize that the guns are giving the last tweet to one life after one life? Are they not exhausted and sickened and depressed from the souls of the slain children haunting their dreams? Night on their skulls! Torturing them! Tormenting them! Die, gun guys! Die! Just kidding. This is Thomas Jefferson, and I would like to take my brethren of the 21st century to task for having so totally and utterly fricked the Republic. <gasps> I can see that by the 21st century, while you can tweet at each other, you know that each tweet might be your last. You have utterly screwed up, utterly misunderstood the Second Amendment, and when you all die and come to heaven, me and the rest of the Founding Fathers are going to be waiting there to kick your butt! Don't kick my butt, Mr. Jefferson. I was on your side the whole time. Stop sucking up to me, Perry. We're gonna kick all your butts just to be sure. If you're wondering why we, the Founding Fathers, are mad at you for having so screwed up the Republic, one of them is your idiot belief that the Second Amendment is some kind of suicide clause. I'm talking, of course, about the apparent belief of Americans in the 21st century that the Second Amendment was written so that citizens could take arms against a tyrannical government. My friends, it insults the memory of the Founding Fathers to say we were so stupid. I hereby call upon and command Perry Logan to explain. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas, uh, well, I couldn't explain it better than you uh, in any way. But the belief that uh, the Second Amendment was put there so we could rebel, take up weapons and rebel, uh, it doesn't even make sense. All I'm saying is it doesn't, uh, it, it can't survive a moment's criticism or close examination, you see. It would make the Second Amendment, how shall I say, 
kind of a suicide clause, wouldn't it? And no sane government puts a suicide clause in there and says, you know, you know, let's have a suicide clause in the Constitution. <laughs> Uh, whereby uh, any group of disgruntled citizens can overthrow the government. Is that brilliant? I tell you what. I tell you what. Uh, here goes. Oh. Probably shouldn't have done that. Best imaginary audience I ever had. Mr. Logan apologizes for the plethora of violence in his show. It's the price we pay for freedom. Oh dear, oh dear, has the world tweeted its last? We've got killer drones to the left of us. Drones being deployed not only against other countries in illegal assassinations, but also here domestically, where the FDA has granted thousands of licenses to local governments to use drones, mostly for surveillance. How's that for the last tweet of our constitutional rights? It's only a matter of time before terrorists have drones, other countries have drones, before local governments start using drones to kill and hurt us, before the federal government starts sending drones out against its own citizens, before miniaturized drones that can kill you are flying around everywhere. Drones! Drones! <laughs> Tweet! Perry, I wish you would stop interrupting me when I'm trying to make a statement. If the drones don't get you the global warming will, Right here in beautiful Austin, Texas, we are in the midst of a mega drought. Do the math on that. It's not just a drought, it's a mega drought. We could be through with the drought and still have to deal with the mega. We could get out of the drought and still have to deal with the mega. No! One more time, Perry, I tell you. This is 
young Perry. This is Perry Logan. In the 1970s, with a question for old Perry. Don't call me old Perry. Old Perry, what's it like to be alive and politically aware on March 7th, 2013? Well, why should I tell you, punk? Okay, uh, apparently my uh, past self has come forward and asked me a question. <laughs> what's it like? Well, uh, I don't know about you, but I do I have, a, I have to fight feelings of... Uh, Imminent demise, imminent catastrophe, imminent last tweet. Mm. It's uh, feelings of catastrophe, and I don't think it's so much a psychological glitch as the fact that we really do have uh, things uh, threatening us. <laughs> it depends on whether you want to admit it or deny it, it seems to me. Like, look, at here we are, uh, kind of waiting for the next child massacre. I tell you what, I tell, tell you what. what. That's the situation we're in. That's a last tweet thing. Isn't that ridiculous? We're worried about our schools, the children in our schools. We have to think twice before going to the movies, all because of these bloody guns. And, and the parent, uh, the uh, misinterpretation of the Constitution, but never mind. But you know, if the guns don't get you the drones, will? Drones. Was that a drone? Did you see that? Was that a drone? They, they can make them small now, you know. <laughs> and yet they can still kill you. And uh, here come the drones. It might as well be, it's like living in a bad science fiction novel. Or a good science fiction novel, uh, but it is, you know, is, that's what it's like, oh, young Perry. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> no, uh, okay, if the drones don't get you, the global warming will. And, uh, you know, there, there's an actual dissension in the scientific ranks about how bad it is. How will civilization be possible. This is really... Oh, oh, pinch yourself. This is really what we're facing. And we're facing, well, I, and if not the extinction of the race, uh, the end of civilized life. It would just be some chaotic, you know, post-apocalyptic mess. And uh, I don't fancy it. I don't suppose you do. So, uh, uh, in answer to young Perry's query, I tell you what, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a little harrowing. Uh, in, 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 in other words, there's a lot of fear because there are real things. It's, you don't have to be uh, oversensitive or hung up in any way to think, is there going to be a pension? Are they going to screw up Social Security? Is each and everything tweeting its last? Yeah. Yeah. It's enough to make you tweet to the rooftops of the world. Don't try this at home. Perry is a professional. Yes, my liege. Dost thou feel that every tweet might be thy last? Aye, my liege. You do look pretty scared, my liege. We're all waiting for the next child massacre. That's gross, my liege. And yet people walk around like this. People live like this. This is going to really look sick to the people of the future. Ah, the people of the future are such twits anyway. You can say that again. 
There's a real end of the world feeling going on, my liege. And for good reason. Your pensions could be gone. Your rights may be gone. A drone might be headed for you any moment. Your child might be murdered at school. Your president thinks he has the right to kill you. That's right. Your president really does, like King John, thinks he has the right to kill you. Tweet. Tweet on, my poor people. The scientists tell us we may soon have to live in a dome, my liege. I've got my ticket, my liege. But don't you see? If we let the global warming deniers into the dome, they will quickly pollute the dome, then deny they're polluting the dome, just like they did before. Just like they did before, yes! Then we will have to build a smaller dome within the first one, because we've polluted the first one, and then if we go in there and take the global warming deniers, they'll pollute that one. I see, my liege. We must kill and eat them or they will pollute the dome. Aye. My liege, I cannot believe the people of the USA let so many guns wash around the streets. It's like letting sewage flow through the streets. Eww. Yes, it is, my liege. Guns are a public health problem. Having guns everywhere is a lot like having sewage everywhere. People are going to get sick. Well said, my liege. It proves Perry Logan's point that there is no room in a civilized society for guns. I tell you what. 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 I said, I tell you what. And now, Professor Perry Logan of the Sorbonne lectures on the suicide clause. Now, Professor? Not with the Sorbonne. All right, all right. Well, apparently, way back in the 18th century, back in 1776, if you must know, the Founding Fathers were standing around writing the Constitution, writing the Bill of Rights. And one of them, I forget which one, said, Hey, let's put a suicide clause in the Constitution! To which the other Founding Fathers responded, Well, I hope you get it that the Suicide Clause, according to this lecture here at the Sorbonne, the Suicide Clause is the Second Amendment. Yes. Uh, <laughs> hey, we live in a world where we each think we're going to tweet our last tweet any moment now. Tweet! 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 And part of it is because we have guns up the wazoo. And part of that is because people think the Second Amendment is a suicide clause. <laughs> Let's all laugh at the idea that the Second Amendment is a suicide clause. Well, my point is that um, something you hear endlessly in the USA, you hear this everywhere you go in the USA, is that the Second Amendment was written so that uh, people can take arms against a tyrannical government and overthrow it. Tell me you haven't heard that a bajillion times. It's like a, it's gospel in the US, but my point is a very simple one. The idea cannot withstand a moment's criticism. <laughs> oh, not to be criticizing, but okay, that sounds good. Patriots taking up arms against the tyrannical government. Well, who would want it otherwise? No, no. Just move in a little closer, okay? You know? How I'm always moving in too close to the camera. Moving a little closer to this argument and you can see it fall apart into its constituent pixels, if you will. <laughs> into the chaotic pixels, you see. That means the Founding Fathers were so dumb they inserted a suicide clause into their own constitution whereby any group of citizens who didn't like the government might be able to overthrow it. Listen to that. Listen to that imaginary audience. 
This is the best imaginary audience I've ever had. <laughs> okay. Now, all I'm saying is that simple, uh, this thing you hear, that, that, that's the Second Amendment was deliberately put there. So say my gun-toting friends, comrades, <laughs> who are tweeting at me all the time. Well, you see, you got to think about that for a minute. It makes no sense whatsoever. You got to think a little bit systemically, if I may, and say that, you know, they would not have put a clause in there, a, a, an amendment, is that made it possible for any group, they wouldn't have to be patriots, it could be any group of armed citizens can overthrow the government. Oh no, and it wouldn't have to be a tyranny either, right? It could be a government they don't like. I cite the Civil War as proof. The Civil War, the savage war of American against American. What a bloody mess. What a case of total and undisputed treason by the South. Could we all just take a moment to say the South were traitors? The South were traitors. The South were traitors. The South were traitors, baby. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? They did exactly what the Patriots talk about. They took up arms against the tyranny, but wait! Why, it wasn't no tyranny at all. It was Abraham Lincoln, possibly our greatest president. Generally regarded as our greatest president. You know, don't you see what was going on? I'm calm. Don't you see what was going on? The South didn't like Lincoln. So they started shooting at their fellow Americans. That's the Civil War. Uh, guys, it was not a tyranny. It was not a bloody tyranny. You were rising up against a legitimate government, a duly elected president, and our greatest president, Abraham Lincoln. Don't you see the flaw in that rising up against tyranny stuff? I've got a good mind to shoot you all. Even though I know you're only imaginary. Think about it. Look a little more closely at that concept. That's, I guess it sounds really groovy. Second Amendment. So we can rise up, baby. <laughs> Love this. Hey, I like to play this thing too. Yeah, I rise up against tyranny. Well, you see, who's to say what's a tyranny, right? This is my problem. This is one of my biggest problems with that whole um, take arms against a tyrannical government thing is I challenge the gun guy's ability to know a tyranny when they see one as opposed to a government that they just didn't happen to lie. Oh, I'm going to take up arms. I don't like the government. I don't like my neighbors either. I'm going to rise up against the tyrannical government and start shooting my fellow citizens. Yeah. Little flaw there, you see? Little bit of a flaw there. Who's to say what's a tyranny? Do you think pro-gun people know what a tyranny is? Do you think any two pro-gun folks would agree on what's a tyranny? And when's the time to start shooting at their fellow citizens? I... Yeah, well, some would agree, but others wouldn't. Come on, you know, some of the gun guys are, how shall I say, ever so slightly politically extreme. Ever so slightly politically extreme? Yes, uh, mad as hatters might be another way to put it, George. The American Nazi Party, a real organization. Today, uh, walking the earth, are uh, brothers known as the American Nazi Party, and guess what? Why, they're adamantly pro-gun. Of course they are. They're right-wing white guys, are you kidding? They're adamantly pro-gun, as are anti-Semites, white separatists, white supremacists, Ku Klux Klaners, militiamen, dogs, pigs, swine, mutants, bus,
It defies logic. It defies belief. It defies common sense. It defies decency. To say that the Founding Fathers intended that the bloody American Nazi party would have the right to open fire against their fellow citizens because they thought it was a tyranny! Ah! One moment, please. Mr. Logan has become exercised. This may be my last tweet. Any tweet could be your last tweet, don't you get it? I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what.